Hi and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden River and today we're looking at a quick tip how to edit your SVG files in Blender and this is a follow-up to the tutorial how to prepare your Inkscape files for Blender so this is the next part of the tutorial we're using Blender 2.91 and here is our screen in front of us we're going to be using the Air Balloon tutor um, tutorial for this um, um, SVG since it's only natural to follow from the last tutorial that we did, that's the precursor to this, which is how to prepare your files for Blender in Inkscape. So the first thing I'm gonna do is hide this object. I'm gonna go and press H on our keyboard and that hides an object. It's not deleted, it's just hidden. And you wanna return it, you press Alt and H. So we're just hiding it. Good, next we're gonna to go to File, Import, and we're going to go to scalable vector graphics.svg and that will bring up our file menu and we have to search for the svg we wish to import mine is right here so i'm just going to go ahead and import it and then when we import our svg we don't see much it's this small little blue thing right here and we will have to scroll in if we want to see it another way you can do is press b select this and then press delete on your numpad and that will zoom right in Good, so now when we look at our balloon, we notice that it doesn't quite look like um, how our balloon should or how it was done in the Inkscape file previously. And there's a reason for that. And that leads us to the first point of how to prepare or how to edit your SVG in Blender. First thing is that you're going to have to set the Z location for every object that you had in your Inkscape SVG or your SVG file from Adobe Illustrator, whatever vector program you use. And the reason why you have to do that is because these programs that, this, that the SVGs are coming from are 2D. They are 2D programs and they don't have any three dimensional comprehension space like in like that's transferable over to Blender. Um, Blender uses three dimensions, that's the X, Y and Z, whereas Inkscape, Adobe Illustrator and, and like typically use X and Y values for their dimensions only being two dimensions so you have to set the z dimensional space for your svg good so we're going to go ahead and do that we're going to go ahead and do that let's just first press the mouse button press down the mouse button and then pull it left or right and this will pan the view in your viewpoint and we notice a couple of things. If we're looking at this balloon now, we're seeing more detail, but we're also seeing these strange artifacts that create this odd looking animation. And that's Blender telling us that we have several objects on the same Z plane, the same Z plane that we need to set for each object. And because we have this, these many objects on the same Z plane, Blender is confused, doesn't know which one to choose to put on top or on bottom, and this, re this yields unreliable results. So what you want to do is begin to move these objects in the Z plane in accordance to how the image looked before you imported it. So what would be ahead and what would be behind is what we're going to sort out now. So let's go ahead, use our middle mouse button and pan, and then we're going to go ahead and select some of these objects. I'm going to hold shift and select the outlines of the balloon. I'm going to press G to grab these items and then press Z, which means to translate along the Z axis. And then we're going to go ahead and push up and when we push up on our mouse the items that we have selected on the z axis plane that we're moving them moves up above everything else so we can see that these three out blue outlines are looking far more pronounced than the rest of the balloon here because they are on a different z plane and we're going to go ahead and select the inner blue right here let's go ahead and select them and we're going to press g and z and push them up and now they become far more pronounced. Good, let's go ahead and click our middle mouse button and pan. Good, so for the next part now, we're gonna select the sack that carries the people on the balloon, and we're just gonna press G and Z, and we're gonna pull down, and that's going to lower the item in the Z plane. We're gonna press G and Z once more, and we're gonna lower the stroke around this balloon sack here. And then we're going to select this teardrops um, weight sack. And we're going to select both the inner blue and the outer darker blue. We're going to press G and Z. And then we're going to go ahead and pull down. 
and that brings down the sack on the Z axis. I'm going to do the same for this too. I'm going to select the inner blue and the outer blue, press G and Z and pull down on your mouse and that lowers it on the Z plane. I'm just going to do exactly the same thing for the rest of the balloon right here. I'm just going to go ahead and press G and Z and carry this down. So it's pulling the mouse down and that lowers the object in the Z translation hierarchy. I'm going to do so for this middle blue here. I'm going to press G and Z and just pull down. Awesome. And then we're going to select the shadow, press G and Z and pull down. And last but not least, we're going to select this shadow here and press G and Z and pull down. And then the only thing that we see of a strange artifact is this circle up here. And press G and Z and let's bring it down a bit. In fact, what we're going to do, select the outline instead, press G and Z and push up. And then we're going to select the inner blue, press G and Z and push up. And now our balloon looks like what we intended it to look like in the first place. And if we click the mouse button, middle mouse button, and pan and hold it down and move your mouse such that we're looking at the balloon sideways, we can see what we've actually done. The elements that, are, that, that we had in our scene from our SVG are now on different Z planes. They're now on different Z locations. Some are higher than others, others are lower than others. Idealistically, when you're doing this in Blender, you wanna keep them as close to each other as possible, but you also wanna make sure that they're not too far, or else this makes it hard to edit later on, especially if you're gonna take on other 3D work. So we're just gonna go ahead and lift some of these up. And there we go. So now we have our balloon set up. That's the first step, we have to set the Z hierarchy. Um, if you had strokes in this that you carried over from Blend, from Inkscape, we didn't have any strokes here because um, we had changed everything to paths already. But if you had any strokes, you would have to go into your bevel operator and to thicken those, you know, but in this case, we didn't have that. And usually we'd thicken those first. But here, we didn't have those, so we don't have to worry about any thickening and any strokes. But that may be a situation that you may have to do. And that you have to go to bevel and you go to your geometry and then you go to your round and you increase the depth right here and that will thicken the Bezier stroke. Good, so now that we have this, what's the next step? The next step after this is parenting. And parenting is simply the action of setting a control element that allows, that controls the movement, the translation, the rotation, and the scale of a group of other objects that you assign to it. Good. So we want the balloon to have it to be its own object, to be its own um to have its own parent and you want all these elements that i'm selecting to be the child of this parent and then we can select any um element of this svg here in the balloon section to be the parent and we just selected this blue to be the parent right here this blue this light blue um beach blue i'm going to press Control and p and whatever object is yellow that's that's um, a yellow or uh, uh, a lighter color orange. A yellow orange is going to be whatever the active selected object is. That's what's going to be assigned the parent. So I'm going to keep object keep transformation. Press press Control and P to go into the parent options, and um, I usually just select keep transform when we go into that options. Control and P puts you into your parent options. Cool. So now if we select this blue right here and press G to move things, you notice that the entire balloon up the top moves. Go ahead, let me just pair into this too. Keep transformation. So everything, now if we select this blue, moves together. Awesome. Good. Next we're just going to go ahead and parent these teardrop sacks. And I'm just going to parent it to the stroke. We see this light orange outline this is the active element so this is going to become the parent good we're going to do the same here it's going to become the parent press ctrl and p keep transform press ctrl and p keep transform cool so now if we move this stroke here we see the whole thing move 
and everything moves here. And the last thing we're going to do is just parent this stroke to the white area here, and we're just going to parent all of these strokes to this white border here. So now, if we move this white border, that controls everything below. And if we just zoom out of it, good. And that makes our parent. Now, if by any chance you accidentally set a parent and you want to remove the parent, you just select the item that's a child of a parent and you're going to go to object, you're going to go to relations and you're going to go to um, make local or make single user. I think it may be make single user or you can press Alt P. Oh, I think Alt P and clear parent. Alt P and clear parent. No, there's an option up here that allows you to clear parent here. Does it come with this? Oh, it's in the same parent option at the bottom and you see clear parent, but you can also press Alt P. Cool. So once you've done your parenting and you're comfortable, the next thing you want to do is to set your emission shaders. Now the shader that it comes in by default is the correct color, but it doesn't come in as an emission shader, which is shadeless. Now, if you're after a shadeless material, you really want to use emission but if you're not then you may want to use a different shader nonetheless so we can see the base color on the right hand side when we go to our material tab on the right that's this circular world looking thing with a checker box um, sphere good what we really want is to first go to where we have the base color and we're gonna see a hex these values come up we're gonna see red green and blue hue saturation and value hsv and you're going to see hex you want to go to the hex and you want to copy this with control and c first then you're going to go to use nodes all right let me just make sure that you're seeing that i'm going to use nodes and we're going to see the shader that we're using which is principal b bsdf and once we turn that the color turns white so it loses the color and then we go into, we press this here and go to emission and select the color that we want. Yeah. And all we have to do is press control and V and paste our initial color. And then we get the emission shader right here. And this does make a difference because if we go ahead and press F2 to render, good. It may be small. Oh, let's go ahead and big this up. Let's go ahead and big this up. It's a bit small. Let's scale this up. Cool. Good. Let's press zero to go back on our camera. Let's press Alt H to bring back our nice background. To bring back our hidden background, press F2. And we notice the only thing that has the correct color is this blue that we apply to the emission shader. And emission just means that it's not affected by external light sources and it will show the true color. And that's what you really want. You want it to show the true color. So you have to apply the emission shader for everything in this balloon to complete this. Let's go ahead and copy it first. Then we're going to go to use nodes, select surface, go to emission shader, click the color once more and control and V and paste. Good. I'm going to do it for the white down here. Select this. Um, go to emission. If it's white already, you don't need to t copy the color because the emission by default is white. Good. And then once you've set some of these colors already, you don't have to keep doing it for every object if it has the same color. You can just go ahead and select the objects that has the same color. Select the one that has the correct emission. Make sure that's the active one. And then we're going to go to object, relations, um, make a single loader. Well, you can make a link here, make link, sorry. And we're going to select materials. Cool. And that will assign all of these materials to this material that's active. Cool. And we're going to do the same for this right here. So we're going to click this one here, press this, this color here, cause it's the same one. And we're going to go ahead and press control. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go to object make links materials and last but not least we're going to select these strokes and we're going to apply the same thing go to the material tab copy the hexadecimal value go
go to emission and paste good and then we're just going to go ahead and select all of these dark blues here holding shift while we select them all of the dark blue values here and make sure the last one you select is this one which has the correct shader already and we're just going to hit control and l and we're going to link all the materials so control and l is a shortcut so everything here is supposed to have an emission shader okay just x out that now if we oh and these have to be changed as well let me just change these also so you can see this is a tedious process when you have a lot of things colors to change to but it's really the only way that i know to do this when you're importing from an svg now if we press f12 all right we still have the shadows to change but that's about it and the colors are true to life also when you go into blender you may find that your colors are desaturated you can fix that by going to um your render engine right here your render tab and we're gonna go to when you go to your render tab we're gonna go to sorry let me just take this out you're gonna go to color management and in color management you want to make sure that your view transform is set to standard by default it's set to filmic and that will make everything gray so you want to change it to standard if you're doing flat motion graphics and that's what your intention is cool so with that the last thing we have to do after the emission shader and the parenting no that's about it so to recap for this quick tip Let's take a look. You have to make sure that you set the Z location for your objects. You have to set the, you have to thicken your strokes if you have any. You have to do parenting you, um, next. And then it's your emission shader for every single color that you're doing. And then lastly, make sure you go into your render tab and check your color settings to see that it's not on filmic, but it's on standard to get the look that you're going for remember that emission shader is is evie's almost e is almost exactly like evie's version to shaders from the pre 2.8 versions of blender so for flat design it's really necessary that you use emission shader also it's not as render intensive as the other shaders so it's a good pick if you're using evie to do flat motion graphic design If you enjoyed this tutorial, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, be sure to ask. Try to keep this as fast as possible. It's a lot to digest, but this is an essential tutorial that shows you how to go through and prepare your SVG files in Blender to be animated. And a lot of my tutorials will have this, and I won't go through this step. So I'll this is an essential tutorial that you will need to know if you're going to follow my tutorials. Um, and also if you want to get yourself in motion graphics because this is an absolutely fabulous way to get into it when you're importing SVGs from a vector program. Does a lot of work for you even though you have to go over the colors. It's totally worth it. Thanks again for watching and until I see you again with another tutorial, get up and design a new dawn. Later.